right, friends, welcome to yet another episode of this, what some I think are hoping is going to be a dumpster fire, um, but if they're not careful, Sir Corey and I are going to pour some kerosene on 2024. That is that is what I can promise. So <clears throat> we've been talking before we pressed record just now about all kinds, all kinds of things. And over the last few weeks, you and I have gotten some interesting feedback from, from people that are subscribing to the channel, which thank you, thank you, thank you to those of you that are subscribing and watching and sharing. If you haven't yet, please take a second, go do that. We're not making money off this. It's not that kind of channel, um, but it puts a feather in our cap every time we see the number go up. And our goal is always to be helping as many people as possible. So if this resonates, Go like, subscribe, share it with somebody that needs to hear this message. That being said, as much support as we've gotten in our DMs, we've gotten some criticism, which to me means we're finding like we're finding our groove, we're finding our niche, if you will. Um, because if you're not pissing some people off, then I think you're not probably being fully authentic. And that I know is a value that's important to both of us. So maybe today we just start with, um, I don't know, your thoughts on, <laughs> your thoughts on what it means or how you can continue showing up in moments where people stay a fan, even if they don't like you, even if they don't agree. Like, what's it look like when they're staying a fan, when they have something to say, how do you, how do you show up? How do you handle, um, that juxtaposition of leaning into your authenticity at the same time that someone's trying to call you to the mat and call you out? So growing up as a larger kid, um, I, I was a fat kid growing up and being fat though i was always a little bit taller than everybody else and somehow subconsciously instinctually um i i was a very soft kid not just soft in like the body aspect but like soft emotionally mm -hmm. my friends had a tendency to size me up and what i mean by that is they would um try to compete with me but not in just like a friendly competition way, like, hey, let's, you know, race and see who who's faster type thing. It was like, no, nah, we need to beat Corey the fuck down, or at least that's what it felt like. Um, and again, I was a soft emotionally, so maybe it was me blowing that out of proportion and being dramatic. But I got so tired of, of being that guy. I got so tired of the, these people I called friends, you know, always trying to compete with me and, and bring me down. And so eventually I got to a point where I was like, you know what? Fuck this. Like, if you're going to compete with me, that's one thing we can compete. We can be cool. We'll shake hands after hug, whatever you want to do. But if you want to come at me now, you just poke the bear and like, I'm, I'm race ready. Mm -hmm. So that being said, you know, there's this, there's people that are always going to hate on what you do. There's people that fucking hate that we're doing this calling. They hate it. Oh. What do they, they're not in the industry anymore. They're not in this profession anymore. I keep saying industry, sorry. Not in this profession anymore. You know, Corey was only an ag teacher for five years. He doesn't know shit. Like, well, I do a motherfucker. And I'm here to talk about those things because you aren't willing to talk about them. Mm -hmm. So listen up. The people that hate on the shit that you're doing are afraid to do anything like that themselves. What I mean is you're supposed to stay in your lane. That is your, your job as a good condition, little sheep. Stay in your lane, do what everybody else does. Be that person. You can be try to be good at what you're doing, but don't you dare try and step out of your lane or your box. This has been created for you. You stay there. You and I, in our own respects, before we even knew each other, decided to step out of that box. I finally got tired of the box and said, fuck the box. I'm going to see what the best version of Corey looks like. And I'm going to do whatever the hell it takes to get there. Yep. So amen. the videos I post on Instagram or stories, the YouTube channel that we're doing, my blog, 
my coaching business, there's people and I feel you. I feel you, whether it's in your body language or whether it's through social media, you're watching my shit and you don't like it. And that's okay. Because if you're watching my shit, you're still a fan. Straight up. You're still a fan. <laughs> I know it hurts to hear that, but that's the truth. So trying to wrap all of this together into what I'm saying, quit worrying about what the fuck I'm doing or what she's doing or what we're doing and worry about what you're doing. Again, we've talked about this before. Quit judging everybody else. Judge yourself. What does the best version of you look like? Do that. If you put more energy into trying to beating, excuse me, if you put more energy into trying be, to be your best mm -hmm. on your throne, rather than being on this hypothetical throne and trying to beat everybody else away, what could you accomplish? How good could you be? Mm -hmm. Then what does the rest of your life look like? Then what does the next 30 years in this profession potentially look like for you? You know, you're so good at selling yourself. Why don't you go be that? Mm -hmm. <sighs> I love when I can always tell that we've got a topic that we're both equally passionate about because you start talking <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, that's so good. And I'm scribbling notes and like follow-up questions and then trying to log them in my head so that I remember all of them. Uh, so if we skip some, we're going to have to do like a part two on this one. Um, <clears throat> starting, starting back at, at the beginning, when you mentioned, um, you know, kind of that aspect of your childhood, I think it's interesting, even if the struggles are different, there's some commonality, I think amongst people that have obviously like been through shit. And it's not, this isn't a comparison game about like who's been through what and what was harder or worse. Like that doesn't exist for me. We could, we could have swapped places and each of us handle each other's like upbringing or childhood totally differently. You know what I mean? But when you've gone through some shit, when you've gone through something that forces you to like kind of rebirth as a different version of yourself, maybe it's bullying. Maybe it's being teased within an inch of your sanity and just wanting that shit to stop. Um, for me, it was more the stuff that I was dealing with at home, but I've been this size. I went from, um, I'm five foot 11, by the way, six foot. If I'm like really <laughs> stretching it out, but I've been this size. I went from five, three in fifth grade to five, nine in sixth grade. I grew like six plus inches just over the summer. I was like Gumby string bean. It was horrible. I got picked on all the time. Um, and then the whole like puberty thing happened, which was even worse. So I was like <laughs> a walking grown up amongst like 12 and 13 year olds. Um, <clears throat> like you, I was picked on a lot at school and at home. And I used to wish that like God, the universe, whomever would just like change my life, like sprinkle down the fairy dust, fix my life. Let me be one of the chosen ones that didn't get picked on. Um, that had like a happy home and all the stuff. And something that my mentor said to me this week totally shifted my mindset, like even more from, from where I've gotten to. And it was this, um, she said, instead of wishing for things to be easier, wish for more wisdom. And I thought that was really powerful because something that we talk a lot about in our coaching community is how our struggles when you use them correctly, your struggle is your superpower, right? Like you've been given something hard to experience, maybe so you can learn something, maybe so you can develop a skill, maybe so that whatever path you leave in your wake turns into somebody else's roadmap, right? Think about it this way. If I had stayed in the box that you're talking about, the number of people I wouldn't be able to help right now who are trying to figure out, do I stay or do I go? I wouldn't be able to help them because I would have no idea how to do it. The conversation wouldn't even be happening. Oh, I have chills right now, just as I say that. So <clears throat> I agree. And it gets really infuriating. I'll just, I'll just say the real truth. It gets infuriating being or realizing you're one of those people that's always been the PC one. That's always been the, I can take it. I've taken worse shit before, so I can handle this, right? 
Um, they can judge me, they can whatever, and you just stomach it for so long. But the more you do that, you lose your voice. And the longer you go without hearing your own voice, you start believing the echo of everybody else. And I came face to face with that this week, as I shared with you. And the absolute last thing that I will ever do, and people should have learned this by now. Um, <laughs> but like you said, when you poke the bear, when the bear wakes up, and in this case, when I'm talking about myself, because I have always been honest and transparent, when I speak, people listen. And for the people that don't like that we're having these conversations, we're not having the conversations for you. We're having the conversations for all of the people that you armbar and manipulate and put fear into that you're going to treat them the way you've treated us and other people that came before us. And everybody gets one chance at life and everybody deserves to have a go at the king's throne if that's what they want to do. And if you are so scared that someone might be successful doing it in a way different than you did, then you don't deserve to be there in the first place. Um, before I get too off track, there's two more things I wanted to share. And then, um, a couple other questions you were talking about like being bullied by your friends. And all of a sudden I had like red flags going up in my head. Cause I'm thinking we talk all the time and we hear about this ag family and it used to really bother me, um, because families look so different nowadays. Right. Um, and I think there's something implied about how, like, yes, when, when the really hard big stuff happens, like we lose somebody from the profession, you know, due to illness or death, when some of those heart wrenching things happen. Yes, I've seen people circle around those individuals or those communities and really show up in, in amazing, meaningful ways. But on the day in, day out, the way that people treat one another most of the time in this profession is toxic and disgusting. I don't let my friends treat me that way. There's no one that I spend quality time with that says anything but amazing things about me. And it's not because I'm in an echo chamber. It's because the people I surround myself with are evolved, um, you know, self-analyzing. Like we're all doing an equal amount of work on ourselves individually so we can come together and be the highest versions of ourselves. I don't, I don't align myself with people that are toxic or make me feel bad about myself or judge me like, no, thank you. But we do that in agate. And then we call it a family. And for people like me that grew up in trauma-based, abuse-based, like toxic families, and you're going to label the types of people that like we work around and let treat people the way that they treat and they get away with it. That doesn't feel like family to me. It's not like the kind of family that I really want. And I think it sends a mixed message when we say we're wanting to create this bigger thing, this community where, you know, we're like elevating each other. You can't say that. And then every time, like you said, every time somebody wants to evolve or expand or like go for the silver bowl, we're batting them away with bats. People want to get elected into leadership roles on the regional or state level. Only certain kinds of people are welcome in those positions. You know what I mean? Like the same types of people get picked for that kind of shit. It's just the truth. You know? Um, you, had, you you mentioned a good thing there. So I think we're trying, we are conditioned to look for validation from our, our group, right? Yeah. So I'm not going to use that example. That was a bad one. I, I had something in mind. Anyways, <laughs> as, as a community, as you called it, you know, I don't know if necessarily the bullying is really as prevalent, right? But it's more of the gossip behind it because you know that somebody's talking about you mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe not, man, you know, there's certain people that I've like legitimately only heard good things about. And I, I love that. That's a, a yeah. thing <laughs> by the way, yeah. but I'm sure there's people that have had salty feelings towards me. Like, what does Corey think he's doing? Blah, blah, blah. Like this, like this YouTube channel, right? Again, there's people like, what the fuck is Corey think he's doing? He's not even an ag teacher anymore. He doesn't have a leg to stand on. Well, again, I spent five years in this profession. I think I did a pretty damn good job. And I think others would, <clears throat> there's many others that would second that motion, mm -hmm. have something to say. 
And if you don't want to listen, that's yours. Yeah. Anyways, what I'm saying is, is in this community, we care too much about what everybody else thinks about us. And that's what stops us from that next step or that growth. Because as a kid who, again, was emotionally very soft, I cared so much what everybody else thought about me. I had a complete fear of speaking in front of my classmates because in high school, in elementary school, because the whole time I'm talking, I'm just thinking, they're probably thinking, look at this fat ass up here. Like, look how ugly he is. Look at, look how stupid he sounds, you know? And maybe they weren't thinking that at all, but in my mind, that was the narrative that I had made up. And so when that is true, when other people are, you know, like, who does Corey think he is? He's only two years in. Why is he putting on a workshop at regional roadshow or, or a summer conference, whatever it is, those thoughts sit in your mind and it's a deterrent from actually doing those things. It's, yeah. it's a, um, the opposite of growth mindset, like, uh, what, what are they called? Fixed okay. mindset. Yes. It's a fixed mindset. And again, it keeps you in your hypothetical lane in your box. Stay there. You're not allowed to expand out of that because I haven't, I haven't allowed you to. Yeah. There's always somebody who thinks their opinion of you needs to be like gospel mm -hmm. and without their, uh, blessing, you can't take that next step because you have to stay underneath them. You have to stay, you know, in your, again, hypothetical way. So the point is, as a community, what if they inspired everybody? What if instead of shitting on somebody's parade because you're, you yourself aren't happy and that is the truth. Mm -hmm. What if you were like, hey, I think it's really great what you're doing. You know, you should do that. You're really good at this. You should do that because we all are fucking good at something. Yes. Like that is the truth. Every single one of us is good at something. Mm -hmm. But instead of doubling down and being good at what great at what you're good at, you're trying to make sure nobody else is going to be gooder than you. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's there, so frustrating. There are um teenagers right now that some new little um I don't know, megabyte of technology changes overnight. They're able to grasp it, create something, apply it in the real world, and like freaking start businesses, make millions of dollars. Meanwhile, here we are in ag ed telling everybody like play by this rule in this category in this way for this amount of time. There's no room for anybody to be creative there's no room for anybody like you said to change lanes shift gears like it's it's almost like back into um the days of like royalty or the caste system where if you're born into the wrong freaking family like sorry you don't get to choose to have that type of job or that lifestyle like you get to be a I shouldn't say you get to be a farmer your whole life like what if you don't want to be a farmer right what if you're an artist what if you have like that ability um, and the reason I keep kind of coming back to, to that piece is because even this last week, it was two or three different people that reached out to me based on like an experience related to either some type of recognition, um, being chosen to participate as the advisor in certain situations or the process of going through and getting elected to be in like a position of leadership. You know what I mean? Um, very different people, different regions, locations, whatever. Um, and it's just interesting that that experience is, um, systemic, you know, like it's not just, this isn't one spot. This isn't just like Sacramento, California, right. It's, it's everywhere. Um, and that reminded me of an analogy that I wanted to share. And I wonder if you've heard of this analogy or, um, or what your opinion is going to be, but <clears throat> During the same conversation with my coach mentor this week, she shared, um, I it's not even just an analogy, I guess, fleas. I didn't realize fleas can jump two feet in the air. I didn't realize they could jump that high or far or whatever. Um, but scientifically speaking, they can jump up to two feet, right? Apparently they've done studies where they put fleas in a jar with the lid on 
and you watch them and the fleas just are jumping, 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 hitting the top of the jar, right? They lay their eggs. They're still jumping. The eggs hatch the new flea babies. They start jumping and ev everything like just hits the top of the lid of the jar, right? What happens when you take the lid off the jar? They think the fucking lid's still there. And so they never, they never jump out of the jar. But they're born with the ability to jump up to two feet. We need to take the lid off the jar in ag education. There are people across this state that have innate abilities, skill sets that belong in or belong to different parts of our community that quite frankly, we are not inclusive of, we don't know enough about, we're not doing a good enough job serving. And none of those people are recognized, welcomed, validated, or invited into these very, you know, behind closed door spaces. The royalty. I think we need to take the lid off ag education. I would love to see everybody empowered to become their best self. And in the process, does that mean some people like maybe not having... <laughs> so many turns in whatever position it is that they're in. I mean, we've got term limits on politicians. Like it's okay. I'm not saying we need to like totally throw away the entire system. People freak out when you start talking about changing aspects of a traditional structure though. But if we keep coming to a point in conversation, if we keep knowing that there's this horrendous attrition rate, knowing that there is a growing number of disgruntled, um, stressed, burnt out professionals, and we keep doing the same thing or nothing at all, then it is only our fault for the results that we're getting out of it. Keep doing the same thing. You're going to get the same result. Definition of insanity. Literally, you know? But then a few people decide to try to start trying some different stuff. We call them crazy. We call them too much or too extra, right? Like anyway. anybody who's ever been done anything great has been called crazy. Like True. that's just the the truth yeah. of it all. Mm -hmm. And and I love your analogy of fleas. There's another one that I've heard is like crabs in a bucket. So if you have crabs in a bucket. And one of the crabs is like trying to get out. The other crabs will pull it back down in. How are we any different? Yeah. Again, win because you want to win. Don't win because you're trying to make everybody else lose. Like that is a some Ooh. weak ass shit is what that is. That's just weak. Um, there was something else too that I thought was pretty interesting that you said. Um, you know, in in terms of why people can be this way i think it's because we ourselves in this traditional setting you know i i say we you know i'm obviously you and i aren't teachers I anymore i still do but, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, it's, I feel like it's something that never leaves you yeah. but you know we inspire our students to chase their dreams be the best that they can be i mean i had students in my rop ag power systems class where we're going over hydraulics and diesel engines and electrical systems and tractor operation and maintenance, right? Like I'm training guys, I was training guys to be technicians or to go to a post-secondary education where they could get even more training. Yeah. I had students. So what I did, one of the things I did, and this is kind of off topic, but use it if you will, I would do, have them do a portfolio. And, and part of it was an ROP requirement, but I would have them do a portfolio with a cover letter and a resume. And then at the end of the year, I would have, I would work on getting as many industry partners to come in and do mock interviews. And the excitement for the students was pretty cool because many of them had not had a, an actual true interview before, but some of the students and, and actually many of them would come up to me and they're like, Hey, uh, Mr. Withers, I, I don't think I want to be a mechanic. And I'm like, that's all right we can figure something else out because we had a guy that worked in the district. I, I can't tell you what his job title was, but he was always down to help 
do these interviews. And I'm like, you're going to interview with this dude because he's game for whatever. Mm -hmm. And you're going to interview your portfolio. Your resume is geared towards you becoming a school psychologist or um, a a veterinarian, whatever it is that they wanted to do, inspiring you. Why aren't we inspiring the people around us, your colleagues? Think about the power of the group you can create, the department that you can create, the, the length of how far you can spread this mission. If you just invested and actually put your energy into the positivity into it, Mm-hmm. instead of working to beat others down. And I'm not saying, and, and what we're not saying to clarify here is not everybody is doing that. No, not at all. But there's some people who they can't shake themselves. So instead they're trying to shake everybody else. It's like, you're not happy unless you're miserable type thing. Like, dude, <laughs> it always get over yourself and yeah. focus on the positivity and the and the good that you have, the skills you have, and enlightening that by enlightening others. Yeah. When um when this thing happened this week that shall not be shall not be named or mentioned. Um cuz we don't need to give it any more power than than it already had, right? It had its moment, it's over, bye-bye. Um but as it was happening, it brought me back to and I've always loved um you know in the movie 8 Mile at the very end when Eminem's getting ready to like do that rap battle and he finds out, I forget what the name of the other character was, <clears throat> but um, basically the other character, like the whole movie he's played off as like being the head of this other crew and like super bad and tough and like from the streets or whatever. Um, truth of the matter is like, he's from this hella nice neighborhood. Parents are still married like all this, like, you know, um, privilege isn't the right word that I want, but basically like had it real freaking easy, right? Like soft, easy life. And then there's Eminem's character. And he has that realization of like, um, with his friend, I already know the worst shit that they're going to say about me. And then in that moment, like you see it click and he's free and he goes out there and owns the stage, wins the rap battle. It's like, we're conditioned to walk around afraid of what someone else is going to think or say. But at the end of the day, we know like every single person knows the best of who they are and the worst of who they are. Own it. When you own it, it's not scary anymore. Like I could sit here right now and tell you all the worst things about me, the worst shit that's happened. Like it's not a secret. And because it's not a secret to me in my life, when other people have something to say about it, start talking. Go ahead. You want to talk about it? You want to have an opinion about why I really left ag education? You want to have an opinion about what I'm doing now and why? Let's really talk about it. Because like I said before, I've always been authentic. I've always been honest. So when I choose to open my mouth about something, that's why people pay attention. That's why people are paying attention to this channel. People get caught up in the like you're saying, you know, we all have a past. Yeah. Good, bad, indifferent, doesn't matter. We all have a past. And so in a lot of ways, I feel like in our head, we convince ourselves that we are a victim of something, right? Yeah. No, thank you. And, and maybe you were, yeah. but we we have this victim mentality and we're trying to out victim everybody else. <laughs> Dude, just own it. Use that as your driving force. Yeah. I, I was thinking about this the other day. Again, I, I growing up as a fat kid and and having people kind of not pick on me. I, I think I was nice enough to where a lot of people didn't actually pick on me, but just competing with me all the time. Yeah. Anybody who I know for a fact hates on what I do, wants me to lose, wants to see me fail, those people. You're my driving fucking force. I appreciate you. Yeah. I hope you're listening too. Yeah. You are my driving force. This whole like the de- personal development process that I embarked on was because I wasn't good enough because you wanted to see me lose. And I just said, bet, here we go. Watch this. And I hope, I hope that you're paying attention and I hope for you that you are doing the same thing in your life too. 
because there is no better driving force than somebody who hates on you. And once you can channel that and not use that as like a victim, as yep. I, as I said a minute ago, yeah. once you can channel that and say, okay, you don't think I can do this? Hold my beer, watch this. That's the driving force. The people that support you and love you, they play a huge role too, right? They play a huge role in watching you and like, hey dude, I appreciate what you're doing. The text messages from some people that I've got from just this YouTube channel or for my um, online training business, those things have been, I can't tell you what you mean to me because I appreciate it. And I know you get it too, Colleen. I know you get it all the time, probably more than me, but it means so much to know that people are in your court. Yep. And those folks play a huge role in this too, but this whole thing wouldn't be possible if people didn't hate on me. So the people, those of you who are haters, those of you who want to see somebody fail, that's the energy you're putting out to the universe. That's the shit that's coming back your way. And I'm going to stick it in your face. And that's the thing. It's like you get <clears throat> you get distracted when you're invested in someone else's story, what they're doing, waiting for that moment where they fail. Here's the thing. I know I'm going to fail. But I'm failing forward. Every goal that I don't reach, I'm freaking like light years ahead of where I was before I was taking action. Right? Like this isn't a short, this isn't like a short game play for me. This isn't like, I mean, no offense. This isn't like, you know, year after year, like shooting for a silver bowl. You know what I mean? Thinking too small and I'm not doing that anymore. So <clears throat> even this week when I was kind of bouncing between like, what the fuck? Like, this is horrible. This sucks. And then what am I going to do about it? I've had the best workouts of my entire life this week. I've lifted heavier shit than I have ever lifted before. Not on your scale. Okay. Like I don't have the same like setup or whatever. Um, but I was doing like single arm rows with, um, with forties and, and like all my squats and stuff. And I was like, I kept going up. I was like, Oh, I could do a little bit more so than I would. And as long as my form stayed good, like I was fine. Um, and then I thought about it and I was like, this is great. This is the best. This is the best thing that could have happened for me. Um, because, and here's like, I think maybe a lesson point or a takeaway for the people listening when the shit storm comes or when you kind of blink your eyes and realize, okay, I'm a little bit stuck or this thing's happening. That's really shitty. This person is saying or doing X, Y, Z things. And you're feeling like you're in a place of being a victim. The best thing that you can do is take immediate, bold action. The thing that feels the most uncomfortable, do that do that thing, have that conversation, write that letter, do that workout, have that meal, whatever it is, because everyone's situation is different. The more bold action you take in that place, the better you will be once like the smoke settles and clears. You know what I mean? Um, and case in point, although I missed a goal, I missed a goal and it was a pretty big one, but even though I missed that goal this week, in light of the challenge that I was facing that almost like totally cut the rug out from under me today, my business is doing <laughs> infinitely better than it was before this thing that almost happened a week ago. Like in a matter of a couple of weeks here, the things that I have set up with the action I took this week, in spite of this situation that was kind of setting me up to maybe like hold me back, fail, whatever. It's setting me up to like completely explode, to have more impact, greater significance, help more people because I didn't let the opinion or the statements of one person keep me in my lane. My lane is wherever I want to fucking go. 100%. Yeah. Again, well, we talked about this quote earlier, but there's a dude He's pretty intense on, on Instagram, Wes Watson, Wes. right? Dude spent like 10 years in the penitentiary. He's all blasted with tats. Everything's the fuck this fucking motherfucker, right? Anyways, he's inspiring as hell because he has done extremely well for himself, but he has a quote and it's pretty simple. Create that individual that you admire and give them to the world. Mm -hmm. That is our duty here on earth. And if you are spending so much time and energy 
into, again, beating people off of your hypothetical throne so you can stay on top, then how the fuck are you supposed to be that? Because you only have so much time and energy. You do. That's that's just the truth. And if you are spending it in, again, that negative atmosphere, then what the hell positive do you have to reinforce? There's only this much of you left, right? And And to clarify some things, too, you know, I'm talking a lot of shit about people who can be a little bit extremely judgmental and who are, again, beating people off their hypothetical throne. The reason I know that is because I have been that. When Before I took my health into consideration, before I took my mindset into consideration, when I was still weak and I was still unhappy with who I was, that's how I was. I'm telling you that you can be better than that because I have found a way to get better than that and be better than that. I didn't want to spend the rest of my life miserable like that. I just had a coaching call with one of my good friends. Her and I have been friends since college. And she's like, Corey, I remember eight years ago, eight, nine years ago, anyways, in college, like literally sitting in your apartment, having a conversation with you. And you were like, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with my life. I didn't have any confidence. I was just miserable. And she's like, to see you now, a happy husband, a happy father, trying to inspire as many people as I can based on the on the actions that I've taken in my life. And they're all hard. Every action I've taken is hard. I've had to convince myself that I can do it. I still have to convince myself I can do it. Because when you do take action, you're putting yourself up for judgment Mm -hmm. from a group of people that their opinions don't fucking matter. But I did it anyways, and it's gotten me here, and I'm going to continue to do it and see where it takes me because I know that it's going to keep pushing me forward. And to your point, yes, you keep failing, and I love what love how you use that term, fail forward. Dude, you don't win every single time. But when you're stacking more wins than losses, you're still winning. <laughs> yeah, It's a simple equation. If it's 8-7 on wins and losses, and you got eight wins and seven losses, you still are winning. Yep. Like it's it's simple, but people are trying to make it so, so many people, not all people, so many people make it so complicated, so confusing. They psych themselves out and they're mm-hmm. like, you know what? It's just easier to sit here in my lane and shit on everybody else. You mm-hmm. don't have to be that. And again, to clarify, I'm not calling out everybody, but sure. there are some people who I know do this for a fact. And I know that if they took into consideration the things that we're talking about, they could be so much better, so much better. And here's the thing. If we love this profession so much, then we owe it collectively. We owe it to be better. Even when it's hard, even when it's scary, even when it means we have to change some things that would be easier to not change. And to that end, whatever um whatever perspective people find themselves on in that situation of being in the profession right now whether they um have experienced that kind of extreme judgment or if they've been in the hot seat of dishing out extreme judgment doesn't matter um you're all o- you're always ever one decision away from like changing your mind changing what you do it's possible Will it be uncomfortable? Like you said, yeah, probably, but it is possible. So there's really only ever like, you've got to make one decision. Are you going to accept the hard, the suck, the hell shithole that you're in for how uncomfortable it is right now? And we know based on our messages that there's a lot of people that are going through and dealing with some shit. You can choose to accept it and stay exactly where you are. Or you can choose a different kind of hard where it empowers you and frees you to be in the freaking driver's seat and pick which lane you want to be in. It's hard anyway. It's already hard. There's already stuff that's not going your way. But at least over here in this other lane, and I'm not saying leaving ad education, in the other lane of just increasing your self-agency, letting your voice be louder than the echo of somebody else. Like in this other lane over here, you're still going to experience some hard, but the result of that hard, what's produced from that hard 
is the you you're not allowed to be over here in this other lane. And it's fucking worth it. The more you grow, the harder it gets. Mm -hmm. And that, I think there's a, uh, an idea in our heads for whatever reason. It's like, well, it's going to be hard right now. And then it's eventually going to get easier. That is not the case. Not if you're growing. better. You get stronger. It's, you level up. Like Exactly. I mean, it's like, okay, if, you know, and I'm using something I'm familiar with here, but like weights, you talked about how you're, you were doing back rows or single arm rows with 45 pounds, right? That's a heavy weight for you. I know. Okay? If, if you stayed at 20 pounds, yeah. if you stayed at 20 pounds your entire life, how are you going to get any stronger? It's going to get fucking easy. And you're just going to continue to do that. Yeah. You're not going to see any results based off of that. But you're like, okay, 20 is getting kind of light. I'm going to move up to 25. You know what? 25 is actually kind of light. I'm going to move up to 30. Let's see what that does, right? It's that constant setting a little bit higher goals for yourself and mm -hmm. keep pushing. And that's the thing is I think we lose sight of our goals because they're too difficult. It's so much easier to quit and give in to this is just who I am, not this is who I can be. And instead of being who you can be, mm -hmm. now you're trying to, again, like a crab in a bucket or a flea in a jar with a lid on it or without the lid, you're pulling everybody else back in. Stop. Stop that. Like focus on yourself. You don't believe in yourself. That's why you don't want to believe in anybody else. And that I, is the problem. I think. I think we learn, I think it's a learned belief that um, you have to have success or reach a certain accomplishment before then you become this like next version of yourself. No, you don't. You become the next version of yourself. And that's what lets you break through to like the next level of whatever your success is going to be. It's like, if you're, um, we're real big on analogies today and like visual images. I just love that about us. Not planned by the way. Um, Thank you, Animal I, Planet. <laughs> I think it's like um, someone talked about if you were, um, let's just leave it as a wall, I guess. Say you're like chipping away at the wall, you know, kind of like Shawshank Redemption, right? Where they like chip through the wall and then like crawl through the pipes and stuff. So if you're chipping away at the wall and you're trying to get through and you've got this little tiny dinky hammer and like you're not making a lot of progress, but like you're still going, you're still going, you're still going. Most people, when it comes to goals or breakthroughs in life, whatever the case may be, when it gets the hardest, you're right before your breakthrough. But because it's so hard and it feels so shitty, most people back off. And if you would have scratched one more time, the light would have shown through the wall and you would have realized you were right there. So to bring it back to this profession, this year, the busiest freaking season of all time that has, <laughs> has descended upon our friends, um, you're, you're going to be triggered. You're going to fall into and fall back into, I think, the baseline that everybody's used to, which is these people showing up this way, those people showing up this way, these people winning this stuff, these people winning that stuff. There's going to be judgment. There's going to be all the things, right? There's going to be good stuff too, like the breakfasts and whatever. If you are ready for a breakthrough, then you have to be willing to do something different than what you've done to get to this point. It might mean a hard conversation. It might mean you as an individual deciding what your parameters and boundaries are, and for the first time ever, sticking to them. So if you don't have someone to take care of your kids and you can't be the person to drive to a field day, cool. Have somebody else drive, have a parent drive. If it's not state finals or some really big situation, guys, it just doesn't matter. This is not like the type of the type of hill you need to die on in terms of relationships with colleagues. And that's just one example that was brought to me in this last week, right? Like instead of tearing each other down, do what freaking Corey said, we could build each other up, inspire each other by actually taking action instead of beating people off the throne, right? And instead of paying so much attention to what some people are doing or not doing, take the time and identify ways we can grow personally. 
What can you do? What can you develop? What can you work on so that you're showing up as a 1% better version of yourself than you were yesterday? If even a small population of people started doing that, the impact would be phenomenal. It's contagious. Uh, it is. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think that's why, like they say, um, successful people surround themselves with other successful people, right? Like an entrepreneur is never going to like shit on your, um, small business idea. They're never going to tease you about putting something you created on Etsy, right? Like yes. they're going to think it's cool as shit. They're going to like talk to you about ways to like market it or advertise it or whatever. Um, you know, a pastor or a speaker is never going to diss you for wanting to share your message with a group of people. The people who are actually doing stuff, the people, as Brene Brown would say, the people that are in the arena never judge other people in the arena. Mm -hmm. It's always the people that are in the stands that are judging those who have the balls to get out of their seat, walk into the arena and fucking do something. And this is an think, invitation for other people to do that. Absolutely. And I think that there's a, we all want to be respected. Yeah. Not just ag teachers. No. Everybody wants to be respected, but being respected requires doing things that are difficult because there's the difference between being respected and being liked. And many of the times those who are well, very, very well liked are not necessarily respected because those people are more inclined to do what the masses want them to do. Again, stay in their lane. The people who are respected are the people who think outside the box and then they move and outside the box. Real respect, not fear-based like respect. You know what I mean? I just want to clarify that. Absolutely, yeah. That can be taken out of context too because there are people who are like respected that are very they, they use intimidation as a factor yeah. that's that's not the case and an example of this is and I, I think I had talked about this on a previous episode but my current job when I got hired I didn't know shit about what I was doing as a service manager and it took me a solid five six months yeah. to gain the respect and trust of a lot of my team I mean that service department revolves around them trusting me Right. And, and making sure that I'm be able to coordinate, deal with multiple personalities, have their best interest in mind, provide them, tool them up for what they need to be successful. And at this point, you know, 13, 14, 15 months later, I feel like I've done what I needed to do to gain that respect. And they believe in me now. They trust me. And because of that, our, our department's profitable. We're winning. And there's good days and bad days, but they know that I have their best interest in mind. And the reason I'm able to have their best interest in mind is because I also have my best interest in mind. Mm -hmm. I dedicate and commit to myself. Therefore, I can commit and dedicate to them. And that's that's kind of a, the nutshell of it all is that's your department, right? If you have five, six, two people in your department, whatever the situation may be, you have to work together. And that strength that you can create by committing to yourself and, uh, and understanding that you can achieve more than that and allowing those, those voices and those, uh, uh, what's the other term? The noise, right? The noise, if to rise above that and push beyond that, you've just inspired everybody else around you to do the same. And that's and the people that are are finding more success in life don't give a shit about what everybody else is doing because they're doing what they need to do with the best interest of everybody else in mind. I don't have a microphone, but I can like I can drop. I'm good about that. Huh? <laughs> I felt pretty good about that. Yeah, I I mean that's that's it. I think that sums that sums up pretty much. Not just our, our message for today, but I think the heart behind, um, cause regard, I don't know why there's a bug in here, <laughs> but I think it sums up pretty well, not just, uh, today's episode, but what people might not realize is, um, there's no, like, there's no ulterior motives here. This, 
I mean, we created this, I don't want to say on accident, but when we first started like consulting with each other, like we had no idea this is what we were going to wind up doing. Um, <clears throat> but I think within those early conversations, it became clear that we figured some stuff out, right? Evident, I think in our personal lives, our professional lives, and then, you know, physically in terms of mindset, fitness, and health, we figured some stuff out and we have the wherewithal. We have the prior experience, whether some people think it's long enough or not, like they're entitled to their opinion. I really don't care, but we've been in it. And so we have that frame of reference to know like what it's like in January and February as an ag teacher to know what it's like in the early days of your career versus what it looks like as you've been around the block a time or two. And um, I'm just, I'm really excited to see how the conversation evolves, new voices, hopefully that we get to start bringing in here pretty soon. And um, now is also just a good time, I think, to remind anybody who's watching if you want to feed in on the conversation, you can do it in the comments. Um, if you've got ideas, topics, conversations you'd like to see us have, people you'd like to see us have those conversations with, reach out to myself or Corey. We are, um, we're open books and there's an open invitation to this table. So if you would like to be at it and come participate, let us know. And if you know of somebody that you think should be here, let us know that too. Um, but with that, we'll say, see you later. And until next time, um, yeah, don't be, don't be afraid to redefine the standard. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like subscribe, share, and we'll be seeing you next Monday.